I'm Dan Johnson talking with John Vining, and he's going to bring us up to speed on the SD Plane project. So you began dealing with the young fellows that were trying to go through the whole process of ASTM approval and like that. Uh, tell us a little bit about how that went and what you had to do to get your airplane underway. When I started talking with them, they were going to be a kit dealer as well as a manufacturer, um, and uh, they said they would support me. And so I went ahead and ordered from them the parts I needed, started my kit, and then um, I found that I was having more and more difficulty communicating with them as uh, I think as their process You, you obviously got in on it after things started to get a little complicated for them. Uh, yes, yes. So I eventually I found that they were no longer there and I was able to go to Provo and buy from out of the warehouse the parts I needed to complete my plane. Ah, okay. I know this is a European design in the first place. Give us a little bit of the story about who created this and then we'll come back to your involvement with him. Uh, this design is by Igor Spacek. Uh, he is an aeronautical engineer in the Czech Republic. In the Czech Republic yes, is where it's from, I, okay. And I think that there must be a, an aeronautical engineer on every corner in the Czech Republic. Because <laughs> they did they, a lot of aviation they, there, no question. Yes, they do. They have a great history of aviation right. going way back. Um, so Igor's plane is a, a very lightweight, quick, uh, low-wing plane. Uh, I was intrigued uh, by it when I saw it on YouTube. I sought these guys out to see the plane for myself, fell in love with it, and decided I wanted to build one. All right. So the plane is um, very popular in Europe as a kit. Yeah. Well, tell us a little bit about what makes up the airplane and okay. why you were attracted to it, that, therefore. Well, I have a lot of experience with boat building ah, okay. and fiberglass and wood. So that's what drew, drew me to this project. Um, I really enjoyed working with the wood. It's a traditional Sitka spruce frame covered with one millimeter Finnish birch plywood. It's That's very thin. thin. Yes, I think the Finns have very sharp veneer knives. Um, and then uh, the veneer, the, the, the ply is uh, coated with um, uh, uh, West System resin that's been cut with uh, a thinner. I'm using denatured alcohol because it has a very slow uh, evaporation rate. Give you a little more time to do what you got to do exactly. then. Okay. But the thin epoxy soaks into the wood and it literally changes the nature of the wood. Ah, so it, it becomes kind of a composite. Yeah, it does. Or it is a composite, it is a composite, composite by yes, that point. That's, we refer to it, this plane, as a mixed composite plane. Mixed composite, okay. Because we're using carbon fiber, fiberglass, wood, um, carbon rod, so we're using poultry. Oh, is that right? Oh, yeah. I didn't even know that last yeah. part, so that's interesting. Well, what we're looking at here, I think, is referred to as the SD-1. Am I correct? That's correct. And this is a single place. Yes. And what engine are you, have you got hanging up front I here? I have the Hearth F-23. Okay. And that's a 50-horsepower boxer. Um, it's a, a two-stroke two engine. Cylinders, uh, yeah, go the cylinders go opposite one another. Uh -huh. um, I really wasn't sure why but it has a 180 degree spark. So the spark is coming again on the exhaust stroke. And I'm thinking that must be a German engineered uh, pollution control because basically- Burn it a little it, further, it, huh? It's cleaning its, clearing its throat at the end of the ah, cycle. Okay, well 50 horsepower on a pretty lightweight single engine airplane, a single seat airplane, yeah. That's going to perform like crazy. Yeah. It's yeah. got some for the for the size of the plane. Yeah, uh, the the VNE according to the specs is 131 miles an is hour. Is it really? Wow. Okay. Jetting and, right along. Uh, what should it cruise at? Give uh, us some of the what you expect. 75 percent. The cruise is expected to be about 120 miles an hour. Yes. Okay. And um, at 60 percent, about 105. Okay. And when you get down to 105 miles an hour, according to Hearth. The fuel burn is 1.7 gallons per hour. <laughs> so you can fly across country here. Yes. How much fuel is it going to hold when it's you get all hold done? Nine gallons. Nine gallons. Well, so but at that burn right now, you're going to use some obviously to climb up. Right. But once you're cruising, you could go quite a ways on that much you gas. Could, you could go about four hours. I said, gee, it's really kind of an attractive airplane. I love the idea. I want to work with wood. I like wood, perhaps. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of build project is it for uh, rough, rough order of magnitude somehow? It's, it's not terribly complicated. We sell the plan with a full-size sidewall drawing, so you can roll it out on your build table. You literally build right on the plan. Yes, huh? you okay. build on the plan. Cover it with uh, four mil plastic, 
and then start. So you preserve the plan, yeah. Yes, but. yes. Well, you don't want it to stick <laughs> because you got to build the left side after you've built the right. <laughs> okay. So uh, you basically start by screwing down the clamp blocks on the table and then taking your dimensional spruce and laying it in and basically you can dry fit the whole thing. Ah, really? Sort of like a puzzle then. Yes, exactly. And then finally apply some epoxies and things like that to stick it all together, right? Yeah, Igor's language is, he says, if you loved building model planes as a kid, this is just a bigger version. Just a big model airplane. Yeah, an intuitive process. Um, and there's lots of support for the builder with our English language forum. Ah, okay. Yeah. So this is builders helping builders then. Exactly. Through the magic of electronic media yes. that everyone uses yeah. now. So. so there's builders. We've got a very good spruce guy in um, England who is uh, part of a team that's restoring a de Havilland comet. Oh, wow. And they know, he knows about spruce, so any questions about spruce, he's going to jump in. Igor always lurks there, so it's usually <laughs> Igor that answers the this tough is the, questions. This is the designer himself. He's the so, designer okay. himself, yes. And so, so there's a lot of support. Um, I found it just a joy to build uh, because being in the shop, working on something made of wood, is just, it's just a whole lot of fun. There's a lot of people I've discovered over the years. I don't happen to be one of them. I'm about flying the airplane, not about building it. But there are many for whom just the building is a great deal of joy to them. You're one of those folks, oh, yeah. huh, John? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I'm a sailor, so it's the journey, not the destination. <laughs> you know, and people people will say to me, "Well, when's that plane going to be done?" Right, right. I, I don't know. Really? I'm and having a lot of I'm fun right now. I'm having a lot of fun building it. Exactly. <laughs> when I get done, exactly. I'll fly it. Sure. And have some fun then, too. But, yeah. And then I bet you'll start another one. That's typical about how this kind of thing works. Probably. Because you talked about there's some work being done to create a two-place two version of this. We have the SD2. Touch on that a little bit. The SD2 has was, was presented at Friedrichshafen this year. It is now um, about to be released as a kit this fall. Okay. And uh, Igor's also manufacturing it, so it's being sold as a complete plane in Europe. So let's talk a little bit about, okay, it comes from Europe and that's where things emanate from and that's mm -hmm. still where the source of knowledge is about the airplane. But you're using a lot of wood and in the past this wood was often procured from an American source, shipped all the way across the Atlantic where they would do things to it and then mm -hmm. ship it all back here now. You're going to change that game a little bit, you told me. We are. The um, One of the products that we're coming out with is called the MKR kit. And the MKR kit, Materials Kit Reduced. Ah, okay, okay. And basically, it contains all the fasteners, all the controls, landing gear, all of the molded parts, the carbon fiber parts, the fuel tank, everything that you need to build the plane minus the wood. Okay, so, and that, it does come, you're buying that from somebody like Aircraft you can Spruce buy or it whatever? From Aircraft Spruce. Those folks have got everything in yeah. the world, so why not? The, the materials list, the wood list for the SD1 will run about thirteen hundred dollars that's it that's it wow okay so no point in shipping it all over there just to ship it back no this, this why why send the spruce from the pacific northwest over to igor so he can run it across his table saw when we can do that ourselves and you so you're going to do the cutting here and whatnot yes. at your facility i'm somewhere? not going to do it okay who's going to how are you going to handle that part the customer can do it or they can order the dimensional lumber directly from uh, aircraft spruce. i see okay they can they'll get do the 15 by 15 by 15 millimeter um, they can do that. Okay, all right. So they're prepared to or, supply that kind of material. Or if the builder has a decent table saw. I mean, I, I cut all my own dimensions. Did you? Over. Okay. Yeah. You got yeah. sheets. It well, worked from there? Yeah. Well, it, now, working with the spruce, you're just using a ripping ripping, you know, ripping blade. You're ripping the long pieces. Okay. And I found that Aircraft Spruce sells a, they call it the spruce grab bag. <laughs> and it's everybody's ends. It's the cutoffs. It's the oh, stuff is that, that right? Really? wants. And most of the pieces are three or four feet long, and so I could cut a lot of lumber out of a box of spruce. Out of a grab bag, huh? Only cost me thirty-five dollars. Wow, wow, that's a good deal. Now so. with the um, with the finished birch plywood, um, it's very easy to cut. I found I use a mat cutter. Really? Yeah, just an exacto mat cutter. So it's got a handle and it holds a blade and it holds the blade right up against the straight edge. Ah. And so you weight the straight edge, weight the wood, and pull the blade along and you just snap it off. Wow. So it's very much like 
building a little model airplane. Exactly. That's kind of how you get the pieces off there, yeah, too. Yeah, you're cutting your parts. Very good. So I, I know we always try and avoid talking too much about price because prices change. Folks will give you a web address. You can ask what the current numbers are. Right. But what do you think it's going to take to get ballpark number, get this airplane in the air, completely done and ready for you to go enjoy it? For for me or for a 51% for for, kit? Well, for a 51% kit. A 51% kit with a tail wheel is about $8,500. <laughs> it can be shipped to the United States for, I think you could be in your yard, or in your driveway for around 10000 Okay. Um, now that's not including the engine that's cost. Fire, that's from the firewall back. Firewall aft, okay. Yes. And then uh, uh, add an engine to we it. We have a firewall forward kit with about four different engines. Okay. Some people are a little surprised when we say we fly them with Briggs and Stratton's. We do. 28 horsepower Briggs right. and Stratton, V-twin. Um, Somebody told me once, he says, when's the last time your lawnmower quit? Exactly. Hardly ever. Yes. And they, they're they often powered by yes. Briggs and Stratton. And we're experimenting, that. too, with the uh, Subaru EH90, okay. which is a little more horsepower, 40 horsepower. Um, it's an industrial engine that uh, has a lot of uh, mileage in terms of durability. Well, they turn those things on and they just run them. Yeah. So Don't turn them off almost. It makes a good aircraft yeah. conversion. Great. Um, so yeah. adding all of that together uh, and then, you know, painting and some instrumentation, which you don't have to have elaborate stuff, but you could have what you wanted, I guess. So I, I think you could easily be in the air for under 20000 Wow. Think about that, folks. That's a really good value yeah. in a neat little airplane, fully enclosed. And how, tell us a little bit about the history. How long has uh, ST been around? How many are flying, if you know um, those numbers? Right now, uh, the set of serial numbers I'm working with is, is the 230 series. So there's 230 that we've that we've licensed okay up, and we're going up from there i think there's well over a hundred flying in europe i know we have two in australia one in new zealand i know we sold a kit in japan uh spot check sro did um and so we've, we're getting them all over the world people are very intrigued by this little plane well you know there's a lot of folks that tell me all the time they look at some carbon fiber speedster in the lsa space beautiful loaded up with everything in the world autopilot and the whole deal well, those can get pretty expensive. It's a lot of airplanes, so they cost some money. But here's proof that aviation doesn't have to be a budget-breaking experience, and the SD plane can be perhaps your cup of tea it there. It could be your plane. All right. Well, uh, let's get more information from you about by sending people to a website. John, where, mm -hmm. where would we tell people to go to contact you and get some more information about SD planes and the SD-1? SDplanesusa.com. Pretty simple there. Yes. So you can find more about that and lots of other affordable aviation. That's all on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining John Binding and myself here down in the ultralet area at EAA AirVenture Oshkosh.